Okay, welcome back, applicants. This is round six of the Hot Wing Challenge. Wow. Uh, it's getting real. It's getting super real. We are one round away from the actual finale, round seven. Um, I'd like to introduce to you our next two guests. They are two of our chief residents. Uh, we have Ari Nudovitz here on the right, and we have Dr. Luke Fai. It's Fai, not Fay. Thank you. Just so you know. Um, and they're going to talk to you about chief resident stuff, shift schedules, resident life, that sort of thing. But before we get started, of course, uh, this is a hot wing challenge. And so we will now welcome our next Woo. round of hot wings. Um, All right. Um, why did we save the two white guys for the end? I, I don't, don't know. know. I'm going to spread this out a little <laughs> okay. bit. Um, although I shouldn't, I shouldn't really, I really shouldn't uh, comment I on have, that because I've I been, have, um, I've, been, I've been struggling through this yeah. entire thing. This I have some probiotics round. if you want. And I have some Tums over there in the corner if you need. Um, well, okay. Why don't we, um, why don't we just dive right into things? Um, uh, Ari, <laughs> tell us yeah. about, um, let's. Tell us about the. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure? <laughs> no. Why don't Why don't you do your part and then eat the wings? I just wanted to see. But it was a straight bite. Oh, sorry. Oh, remember, we planned this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Talk first, eat later. Okay. Eat and sweat later. What? I'm okay. Oh. All right. So tell us about the the shift schedule. How many shifts do residents work here? What's their schedule like? Yeah. Uh, elaborate more, please. We're all about equality. Uh, in this residency, uh, we really focus on your circadian rhythm. So when we bunch your night shifts and day shifts, I really try to put them in a row so you're not switching back and forth. I think that's really important for us um, so you're not too overworked. Um, another thing we do is we keep everything on a spreadsheet. So if you're ever unsure if you're working too much or you feel like you're doing too many nights, you can always ask to see the sheet to make sure that everything is equal between all our residents. Um, one thing that we do that a lot of residents love, I can't feel my mouth, is um, you get two specific days off each rotation. And we're very, very good about giving you those two days off. So if you need to do anything in particular, go to a wedding, go to a doctor's appointment, you will 100% sure get those two days off. Um, <laughs> um, for our... Interns who come in, we're doing uh, 204 hours, which is about 17 shifts. We have a mixture of eights and twelves that we started, especially around the COVID pandemic, um, which a lot of people have been liking. Um, eight hour shifts, um, they go by quicker 12 hour shifts, you're obviously gonna be working less days. So everyone kind of wins. Um, for our interns, we're also doing trauma shadow shifts, which is actually really cool and a lot of people um, have been coming up to me and telling me how much they love them. You get to see how a trauma is run and you get your procedures in, which a lot of interns really, really want. You get um, central lines, arterial lines in right from the get-go. Um, as a second year, you're working 192 hours. You're actually considered a senior, so you could be running codes and trauma shifts as well. That's about 16 shifts a month. And then your third year, um, you're working 180 hours. You are now a senior. You're supervising. You're working as a pre-attending, um, which is about 15 shifts a month. And then if you're a chief, you're working about 168 hours, which equates to about 14 shifts a month. I'm going to try another bite. So, no, thank you for sharing all that. Um, I, I'll just reiterate that everything is super fair. Um, there is um, a, a huge spreadsheet of tallies and we're always keeping track of how many weekends and nights and everything that you do. It's super, super fair. Um, the one thing I'll mention about, are you okay, both of you? You know, I'm also ultimately responsible oh. for both of your health. Why did you uh, post this right this, now? <laughs> this was way worse than I was anticipating. <laughs> um, Someone just ate this and said it wasn't very bad. <laughs> what is uh, this? Um, but I will say that so we until March of 2020 we were all 12 hours and it became very apparent to us um, after COVID um, hit us and we and we experienced the surge that we saw in New York City 
that eight hours, uh, eight hour shifts, a mix of 12s and eights are actually really the way to go. And that, um, you know, your really, your overall wellness and health is optimized when you do a mix of 12s and eights. So I think for the most part, uh, all of our residents have really welcomed the addition of uh, eight hour shifts. Um, and so we have gone from strictly 12 hour shifts and a number of residents to more of an hour uh, tabulation uh, as opposed to just shifts. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Now, why don't we talk about a little bit about the clinical curriculum? Like, what do you, what do you actually learn clinically over the three years? Are you able to speak yet? Or yeah, no, I'm good. I'm I good. can't. No. <laughs> um, your your part is to yeah. come. <laughs> I have a lot of tears, and I realized I have some of the hot sauce. <laughs> so really, really burnt. Hey, I just want to say that the residents decided to go at the very end, so it's not just me. Um, so Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Our um, interns. It's okay. One of the, one we'll, of get, the... we'll get through. Oh, hold on, wait. Yeah, it burns. Oh. Yeah. Don't touch his eyes. I got you. Don't touch the eyes. Uh, we're really good as co-chiefs. We look out for each other. <laughs> um, our interns, uh, one of the great things that we do, like a lot of New York City programs do, is that we have an introduction to EM. Uh, this is basically a transition from medical school into your residency. We don't just throw you in and expect you to know everything. You're going to get a lot of didactic sessions. You're going to get a lot of shadow shifts. This is a great time to bond with your class because you're going to be spending hopefully the next three years with them. And also learn where everything is in the ED, um, where all the off-service rotations are going to be. This is really what's going to set a precedent for the rest of your time here, and everyone seems to love it. Um, you also get to go upstate um, for uh, New York ASAP. And at that time, you get to play volleyball, which our year was the champion. Um, so you guys have to live up to that. That's um, their year. We're great. Very athletic. Choose, we beat every every team. As you can well, tell. he used to play volleyball, and he's a tall white guy. Yeah. I mean, he so didn't play like, volleyball. <laughs> He played wow, soccer. You play and, uh, I play volleyball. And what else? Tennis. I just said we're really good to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to edit that. Um, <laughs> after that, um, each year you do progressively more emergency medicine blocks. As an intern, you're doing about six blocks of EM. You do about a block of pediatric EM, which is great. Because um, you get a lot of peds experience, which is very important. Um, you do a block of ultrasound that uh, Dr. Greco was talking about earlier. And, and at the same time in the mornings, you gotta go to anesthesiology <laughs> to learn how to intubate before intubating in the ED. Tubes and lubes. Um, lots of tubes and lubes, um, which is a great time. Um, you gotta do a block of MICU. This is where you're primarily gonna be doing a lot of central lines, arterial lines, starting a lot of pressors, which is gonna prepare you in particular to be a second year during your senior shifts in trauma. We combined OB with CT surgery, so you're able to get the deliveries you need in the future. And with CT surgery, you're doing a lot of chest tubes, which is an awesome experience that you get to do in the OR in a controlled setting. And if they're available in the ED, you're the uh, point person for that as well, which is really cool. Um, Dr. Huang is uh, the head of our sports medicine, so you're going to be doing Huang. Sorry, yeah. I can't sure. pronounce anything. Yeah. Luke's making fun of me all the time. Um, you know, Luke, you can't expect people to pronounce your name if you yeah. can't. Uh, I'm good at pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, it's because I'm just... no one can pronounce his. Um, I don't know why I hate that. Um, <laughs> We're all struggling yeah. here a little bit. If the camera's not picking that up, I just want you to all this, to be very this is well aware. Well, yeah. Two weeks of orthopedics. All right. Um, so you meet with, um, I'm just gonna call him Victor. You meet with Dr. Victor, um, and you're able to do all your blocks, your splints, your casts, which is great time, and you get to go to the OR to do nerve blocks, which is really cool, and it's a new part of our curriculum. Um, you're gonna do toxicology, which is also two weeks, which you'll do the other two weeks as a third year. This is at New York City Poison Control, which is at NYU, which is arguably one of the best tox places in the country. So you're really going to learn all your uh, toxic syndromes. Um, you're going to do callbacks there and learn about really cool cases all over New York. 
And then everyone gets uh, one block full of vacation, which we do at the beginning of the year. Um, you tell me which blocks you want, and then we rank them, and almost everyone gets their first choice, which is really cool. And it's two weeks in the first six months and two weeks in the next six months, so it's not just four weeks uh, 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 together. I just want everybody yeah. to recognize what is not up there um, in your first year. Uh, PD, no. Uh, wellness. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's a whole first month as well. Oh, that's you right. go on a vacation and your whole month is, gro is yeah. floors. We do not make you do medical floors. Mm. Yeah, none of that. Because uh, historically we have just found that medical floors don't really add to your educational uh, experience. And um, so you are not put on the medicine floors, but you will have a great medicine month uh, in the MICU. And just to clarify, the pediatric EM block is not a singular block it's not by itself it's integrated into yeah. your Correct. intern it's year. all spread out yeah. we talked about that in round five with the pediatric it's a longitudinal experience um we just we listed this we list it like this so that you're aware that you are in the pdd and acgme also needs to see that we are in the pdd yep uh let's move on to the second year Second this is the second year. Oh, oh going back. This is a, we should introduce the class. This is the first year class. This is yes. our first year class. We got nine residents in our first year class. They're all amazing. We love all of them, um, except for one who put the hot sauce on these wings. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, we will have an interesting schedule for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, and then this is our second year class, who I I like to refer to them as the Asian Chippendales. Yeah, <laughs> well, because it is an all male class. I don't know how that happened. It just happened, but we just know pure it. happenstance. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as I said before, we increase the amount of blocks you have in EM every year. Um, so you're going to do be, be doing about six and a half blocks as a second year. Peds is staying the same. You have one block that's uh, distributed equally throughout the year. You're doing another block of ultrasound, same as first year, but you're more of a senior position. You're doing more advanced techniques that Dr. Greco talked about, and you'll learn a lot of things that can really help you, especially when you're in the trauma room. You're gonna do a block of SICU. When you go upstairs, you get really close to a lot of our co-surgical residents, uh, which is an amazing time. You're one with almost, or always, the sickest patients in our hospital. Um, and you're managing them almost by yourself, which is a really cool experience. And I think it really advances Definitely you, as, you a, as a physician. Um, you're going to work um, on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum in PIMU and NICU um, with the youngest patients in our hospital. I think it's a great experience, especially NICU, um, where you're going to be able to intubate, hopefully, um, these patients who are 30, 40 weeks old um, in a very controlled environment with backups. Um, one of our new experiences is actually trauma, where we're going to UPenn. Um, this started this past year. Uh, Luke and I went together, and uh, we had an amazing experience there. Um, you're going to learn trauma from a completely different perspective. Um, you're going to get as many chest tubes as you can imagine. Um, thoracotomies happen almost on a daily, if not weekly basis. Um, and then you get to learn a different side of trauma. Even though we're a level one trauma center, you get to experience two different places, which I think is a, is a huge benefit for our residency. Um, you get half a block to do education and research. Um, this is the time to do all your research projects if you haven't done them. Um, and you have the opportunity to teach medical students to see if this is something that you're going to be interested later on if you wanted to go into academia. And again, you still have another block of vacation. Um, same thing as intern year. You give uh, your preferences at the beginning of the year, and usually everyone gets their top choice. I'm still crying. We're going to move on to the third year, but yeah. don't you find – I'll just give you some pointers. <sighs> If you just keep your mouth slightly open and yep. don't swallow your spit and just let like the saliva pool in your mouth, it helps. That sounds disgusting. It all goes, <laughs> it all goes numb in your mouth, which is great. It's um, if you use the tissue in your What eyes. should I add to this? I, I The education and research elective was something that we started about two years ago. Um, and it's been amazing. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it was in conjunction with uh, the initiation of our medical education fellowship. Um, it's done wonders in terms of our uh, clerkship, uh, teaching the medical students, teaching rounds, um, education and conference. Oh my God, I really am having a stroke. 
Um, it's it's been great. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, Luke, can yes. you speak? Yes, I can speak. Okay. Well, I, I actually about, wanted to add something about trauma. Talk about trauma, yeah. So, so the the trauma experience at UPenn, it's a, it's a new rotation. We used to go somewhere else, and now we have uh, acquired a very valuable and amazing experience at UPenn. It is the UPenn. It's at their Penn Presbyterian Medical Center. You can see the pictures here from the helipad in the upper right and uh, some really attractive resident there in the blue scrubs working on you? ship. That's like you? No, that's the... Jeremy. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm well, in Well, no, you're on the helipad. I... I'm on the helipad. I feel like that's what like, you uh, you're like, a, you know. Uh, after a night shift. You didn't like me. It's like the yeah. sun is rising. You were doing you're work. in your doctor no, outfit. It looks like a little bit of a, like a, a, a like a douchebag Tinder profile. <laughs> um, yeah, you just went there. Okay, yeah. great, awesome. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it really is a great experience. You get a lot. They get a lot of penetrating trauma because they're on the border of West Philly, and unfortunately, West Philly is a bit of like a knife and gun club. So you get penetrating trauma, stab wounds, gunshot wounds. You get a lot of procedures, and you really just learn trauma super, super well, super, super tight, and we're actually kind of in the in the baby step process of bringing some of their uh, procedural skills, some of their role skills, some of their resources to our program and trying to implement some of things that they do well there and bring it to our program here. So it's definitely a, a great learning experience, and it's a, it's a new process for us that we've definitely taken advantage of. I'm very happy that we added it to the curriculum, uh, and I think only more amazing things are going to come of it. Agreed. Um, Ari, you want to talk about our third year? Yeah, so third year, we're almost at the end. Um, increasing EM blocks again. You're doing about eight EM blocks throughout the year. Pediatric, same thing. You're doing one block that's distributed equally throughout. You're doing your other half a block of toxicology, going back to New York City poison control, um, just to really get that last minute toxidromes in. Orthopedics, again, you're doing a half a block with Dr. Victor. You're going to be doing your casting splinting, especially if you want to go out in the community. This is your time to really learn what to do. Um, and you get a lot of blocks, which is great. Uh, you're going to do also half a block in administration. So if you're interested in that track, which I am, um, you actually get to experience that before going off into whatever you're going to do. Um, a really cool block you're going to do is EMS, where you get to work with uh, Finney. Um, where you get to go on the back of an ambulance truck and kind of see what they're doing pre-hospital um, to see how they're bringing the patients in and kind of how they're resuscitating them before they come in. Just gives you a different perspective. And let me just add there, it's, it's literally the best EMS rotation in New York um, <coughs> because the FIDNI, um, it's all inclusive. So you get to do dispatch, you get to learn medical control, um, you get to learn BLS, ACLS. It's really the way to go. It's a super um, intense two weeks. Uh, it's highly regimented, but you get to you get to really get the full spectrum of uh, of EMS, including disaster medicine, uh, EMS protocols, medical control, that sort of thing. Yep. Um, and then, like it was mentioned beforehand, you get your elective, which could be international, which is a great time. Uh, we have the Jam Fun which is uh, very, very lucky for us that uh, we actually get a stipend that we can go abroad with. Um, we have Dr. Christine Chen you can work with. We can go anywhere around the world, which I think is a very unique experience that's uh, part of our program. Or you could stay in-house and work on anything that you want to work on before going off to be an attending. Um, and then once again, you get your one block of vacation that's split up into two two-week um, intervals of time. And this is just a schematic that I, I threw up there as well. I mean, I think the biggest point of this schematic is just to kind of visually, uh, you know, assess that you really are primarily in one site, which is NYPQ. Um, there are very few times where you are away from campus uh, at a different place. Um, and you want to right. talk about uh, our... I'm up. Yeah. I can, Are I you can, okay? I can now speak, yeah. <laughs> that first bite was the worst part. That's, uh, it was actually I, Did you see the tears insane. rolling down my eyes? My, actually, my, my, yeah, my you're hairline diaphoretic. is burning. Yeah. It's like tingling burning. Not your mouth? Your ears are but, Well, that too. too. Oh. No, but, but, but with prior wings, my mouth was burning. Yeah. But 
This is a new phenomenon. I'm proud of you, man. This is a completely <laughs> new phenomenon. This, one murdered. this is yeah. just oh, all of this it, is like. I finished mine. It's not just burning. Is gone. It's like neuropathic pain. Like all right. Right here. <laughs> so, okay, so I am going to talk about real quick our team structure in the ED. We have a pod system, which is the only system that I know, but I think it works very well because it fairly separates patients who come in through triage between blue, green, and gold. As you can see here, blue and green are 24 hour teams and gold is a 16 hour team. They operate from nine to one, which is the busiest time of the ED. So each team takes a patient one to one to one, basically is how it goes. On blue, that's the more uh, senior team, if you will. There's usually a third year, a PGY-3, and then a PGY-1 or an off-service rotator who operates as an intern. And then of course there's an attending. On green, there's usually a PGY-2 and a junior as well, and an attending. And then on gold, the residents don't work the gold team. Those are our APPs um, as well as the attendings. And just quick note, the swing shifts, we do have some swing shifts. Sometimes we don't always have the staffing for them, but we try to add them on as often as possible. So you'll have someone on blue and green from 11 to 11, which is usually an intern or an off-service rotator who helps kind of take the load of patients with you. Uh, moving on to high acuity, our red team or trauma shift is a dedicated recess shift. It's really super awesome. I think I can speak for the whole residency in saying that it's our favorite shift. You either work 11 to 11 in red on the weekends or nine to five and then five to one on the weekdays. And it's just you and an attending and you take all the stroke notifications, all the trauma notifications, all the unstable blood pressure or unstable vital signs um, and all the EMS notifications. It's really awesome. It's high acuity, high procedures, and it really tests like your medical knowledge as well as your procedural skills as well. And then urgent care is staffed by the PAs primarily. However, the residents uh, work there on Mondays and Thursdays. In COVID times, unfortunately, we've had to revamp the schedule a little bit, but we are working our way back into ED South. You do um, an 11 to 11 shift in ED South. You get your laceration repairs. You get, uh, let's see, what is this called? Nail bed lacerations. Perinicchia. Uh, Perinicchia. Perinicchia. Nail bed lacerations. It's a lot I, of lots of eye there. complaints. You use the soot lamp exam you, uh, to... To take out four bodies. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You get casting, splinting, ortho, right. Uh, this is your bread and butter that you're going to use. For sure. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of having a exposure to urgent care. I know some programs don't have exposure to urgent care. And I mean, being an urgent care physician or knowing how to do those things is incumbent upon any emergency physician. So, so there's two sides of the argument uh, in terms of urgent care. I think some people will argue that as uh, EM progresses into the future, EM will you know, the urgent care things will be more staffed by uh, associate providers and therefore why do EM docs need to even know, but it's, you know, know about urgent care procedures, but the, the honest truth is you need to know about urgent care experience, you know, urgent care procedures, and you need to supervise all of your APPs at some point. And so urgent care is a very, very valuable integral part of emergency medicine training. And you will graduate here with that experience during COVID times, yes, because we've had some redistribution of resources in our ED, uh, we don't necessarily have the capability of having uh, attendings and residents in urgent care. However, during portions of the day, uh, all of the urgent care, comes, urgent care patients come to the main ED and our residents uh, participate in their care uh, during those hours. So you will graduate this program completely um, completely capable and able to uh, take care of urgent care, bread and butter type of stuff. And then PEDS is staffed 24 seven. There's a 7A to 7P resident and a 7P to 7A resident. Uh, it used to be, we used to have a little bit more PEDS staffing, uh, but because of COVID PEDS volume is down, but that may revert back to normal by the time you guys get here. We get a lot of exposure to PEDS. And honestly, I felt very, very well experienced and, and very well prepared to take care of kids here. Next slide. Uh, yes, and fifteen right. to twenty percent of uh, fifteen to twenty percent of your shifts will be in the PZD, so you will be uh, adequately exposed to pediatric population. All right, you want to say your thing about you know the program location? I mean, what's there to say? I mean, there's we are a program in New York City, 
And New York City is the greatest, the greatest city <laughs> in the whole wide world. Okay. <laughs> and coming from India, Bombay does not even match any level of New York City. Okay. <laughs> New York City is the best city in the world. And if you disagree, you're just wrong. So we'll yeah. just leave it at that. I mean, I've... we have amazing nightlife. We have amazing yeah. arts. I yeah, temporarily it shut down because of COVID. I get that, but uh, the cuisine, the, the between Broadway and all the things that you can do, even at four o'clock in the morning, there is nothing that beats New York City. Uh, do you That's agree? That's true. I mean, is especially especially in Queens, you you have authentic cuisine from basically around the world. You go to Jackson Heights, you get authentic Indian. You come to Flushing, you get authentic Chinese. It's super legit food, and of course Manhattan, like you said, has just been its way on the seven train. Um, speaking of location, yes, yeah. segue to the map. So we're in Flushing, which is basically a Chinese Korean community. And then as you move west, you get into Jackson Heights Corona, which is a lot of Hispanics. And then uh, also in that neighborhood, you get a lot of like Indian population. Once you get all the way to Manhattan, obviously you're in the proper city. I live in Long Island City, it's a great area. The, I mean, New York. New York is the best. I've I've been here since med school. I've stayed here. It's an amazing place. We, if you live in downtown Flushing, you can easily get into the city on the seven train. And a lot of residents will live in Long Island City. Will live in Astoria. Will even live in Williamsburg. And the drive, because you're going opposite commute, is pretty quick. Even if you're go, doing a day shift, it's maybe 15, 20 minutes yeah, at most. Yeah. So. I mean, Queens is uh, just to piggyback on that. Queens is the most ethnically diverse county you'll ever encounter, period. Uh, you literally, when you travel from Long Island City all the way east, you've, you've literally visited every continent, right? Yep. From the Greeks in Astoria to the Russians in Forest Hills to the Indians in Jackson Heights to the Chinese in Flushing. I mean, like, you've, it's, it's the entire world in one county. Uh, it really is. Uh, and what's nearby? What's the, nearby? The Casena Park Velodrome. I have actually biked on this thing before. It's a little, it's a little bumpy, but uh, here in Flushing, you actually are pretty close to the highways to get you out to Long Island to go to different vineyards, to go to different beaches in the summer. The Velodrome is just a quick walk away. Also, cue next slide. Oh, yep, downtown Flushing is also very close. Like I mentioned before. Lots of authentic Chinese cuisine. And downtown Flushing is being really built up. There's lots of new apartment buildings. I lived there for my first two years in a very new modern apartment building with a gym and a pool and everything. And then also close by is Flushing Meadows Corona Park. I have biked and skateboarded through this park many times. There's actually a skate park there. And we recently went there for a residency video shoot. Hopefully you'll see it in the recruitment video. The U.S. Open is there, as well as um, City Field. We have done wellness events at City Field for Mets games, and we honestly, it's it's a great it's a great spot. It's super close to Manhattan, and Flushing is an amazing place. I will also just add that, like, even though it's you know somewhat of an urban jungle, you are literally a hop, skip, and jump away from anything your heart desires. If you want to go hiking in the mountains. Uh, upstate New York is an hour away. If you want to go to the beaches in the summer, Long Island has a number of beaches. Uh, so there's plenty of places that you want to go out to Long Island, to the Hamptons, to wineries, to orchards, whatever it is. There's plenty of opportunities for you to replenish and recharge. So I think that's it. Um, are you guys okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm a little Trump's not Trump's okay. Pepsi. I still have one more round. You guys it. are done. I, I have one more round. Um, well, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, especially sharing the resident experience. That is a obviously the most we the hope most you guys important enjoyed it. Yeah. the most important section. So uh, thanks again, everybody, and we're gonna shortly move on to round seven, if you will.